this situation in the South China Sea has been blown out of proportion. We need all parties to take a step back and see the bigger picture. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all claimant states to forge greater cooperation and build on a common prosperity. That's funny, Professor, because I would like to bring to mind a statement you released two years ago. You said, and I quote, the Chinese government's Nine Dash Line claims in the South China Sea are inconsistent with the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which does not recognize the concept of historical waters. End quote. The Southeast Asian Times 2019. Do you or do you not still support this statement? Because that sounds like to me an unequivocal support for the rule of law, Professor. I'm afraid that the situation in the South China Sea now has become a highly delicate one. More claimant states are now aggressively asserting competing claims and I think we should be extra careful to ensure that this whole issue does not escalate into an open conflict. I made those comments purely as an academic observer. But my one. comments now concern political realities given the stakes involved. The principle which we are grappling now with is state sovereignty. It has always been a every political nation, one. Every, every nation must have the right to decide on what is right or wrong within its sovereign borders. And so whatever happens, the onus is on each nation to manage its own affairs, be it good or bad. We need to respect the sovereignty of nations here, big or small. So stop interfering in the affairs of other states and hold them responsible for their own actions. Let's not repeat the mistakes of the past and look to the future. There's so much that can be done through dialogue and diplomacy. They have tried that before. Failure, they failure to do so, Sam. I fear that this will jeopardize the entire international system as we know it. And the Westphalian state system may well disappear before we know it. Now, how different will it be from the tyrannical monarchs of the past or populist movements popping up everywhere? I want to understand this, Professor. You are an internationally recognised expert in international law. You clearly supported the UN's Convention on the Law of the Sea two years ago. You had even put up press releases for it. Why do you now seem to be backtracking and rejecting your previous position now? Samantha, the international situation is volatile and news changes every day. Facts don't, Professor. But opinions change. This situation has been going on for decades for longer than you can imagine. And I'm not sure whether you are old enough to remember. More importantly, what we see or read on the news is usually only half the story. And that is what news organisations like yourself, Asia TV, are pushing. Isn't that Sam? But is that right? or responsible approach. What would you consider to be the right approach, Professor? The United States have been conducting freedom of navigation exercises States. in the South China Sea for decades, way before this situation first started. The issue here is not about who is more right or more wrong, because that can never lead to a common resolution. The most constructive way forward, in my opinion, is for all literal state powers to come to an agreement on the contested islands through bilateral negotiations with China. Does that mean you think that, that you is what mentioned. I would argue? And as much as I believe in the rule of law, a blind resort to it this time round is not the way to go. Does that mean you think the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea no longer applies for contesting claimants in the South China Sea? Samantha, the purpose of my interview tonight is not a political one. I didn't say it was. May I remind you that under international law, no state is superior to any other and does not act as the world's prosecutor. A key function of international law is to prevent atrocities and protect the innocent. There's nothing happening in the South China Sea that indicates that at the moment. That's why I advocate restraint from contesting states and urge the path of dialogue and diplomacy instead, which I believe can potentially lead to a bright future for everyone. Behind this cloud, there could be a rainbow. Professor Goh, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.
That was Professor Go Tok Chai, Associate Professor for International Law and Partner at Go and Wong LLC. Now, let's turn to markets. The S&P 500 is down a thousand basis point on the news of another rate hike from the Fed as prices of food continue to soar across the world due to increasingly unpredictable climates. Many central banks around the world are fearing that the worst is yet to come. More from us after the break.